What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 video. So today what I wanna talk about is one of my favorite cores to come out of not only VGC 2023 series two, but I guess particularly Orlando regionals where we saw it really dominate the competition. And that's gonna be, can you guess what it is? That's right, it's gonna be Great Tusk and Talonflame, uh, usually paired with Fluttermane, but Great Tusk, Talonflame, like Tusk, Flame is just like the most standard way of referring to it. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna discuss this combo, why it's so good, why people are using it, and uh, just different variations of it. So if you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like, and subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. That's my comment question of the day, which is what duo Pokemon, or core, I guess, do you think is going to be dominant going forward? Yeah, let's go ahead and get into the video. Also, if you want an extra video at the top of each week, uh, be sure to check out my YouTube membership, my Twitch subscriber or Patreon program. They're all the same thing. You just get an extra video at the top of each week. Anyways, let's do this. So what is Great Tusk? Who is Great Tusk? Why is Great Tusk? And when is Great Tusk? Uh, Great Tusk is in the past. In the past, um, he's the best. Uh, you're using him because he's the best. And what is it? Um, what is he? Why is he? Oh, where is he? He's on my team builder. Okay, so Great Tusk has 115 HP and 131 base attack, 131 base defense, 53 special attack, 53 special defense, and 87 speed. Honestly, this could care less. Could care less. There's a lot of varieties of ways that you could run Great Tusk, um, and I, I guess the the way that I can best explain why it's like a good Pokemon uh, can be summed up entirely in one move. And that is Headlong Rush. Let me tell you something. Uh, my bingo card for Generation 9, I guess Legends Arceus was like technically Generation 8, but let's pretend that it's Generation 9. I, it came out after Sword and Shield and it wasn't a VGC. My bingo card for Gen 9 did not include ground type close combat. That is what this move is. Typically when you have a ground type, right? Let's like take a look at probably what was the best ground type of the previous format, which is gonna be Garchomp. Garchomp, one of the best ground types in the game, usually has to choose between Earthquake or Stomping Tantrum, and occasionally it'll run both. Great Tusk with slightly higher attack, better defense overall, um, and like less speed, has the advantage in, in one department. It has this move. So Earthquake, if you don't know, uh, it does spread damage, right? It's a ground type move, hits everything in the field, and when a move does spread damage, its power gets reduced to 75% of its base power. If it's single target, it's still, you know, 100%. So Earthquake and Stomping Tantrum do the exact same damage, but Earthquake hits both opponents and your partner. Yeah, so I mean, like, 75 base power, like, don't get me wrong, that's gonna be a really strong move coming off of, like, Life Orb, Terra Ground, um... Where is it? Terra Ground, uh, Garchomp? Like, that's gonna be, like, a really strong move, right? You hit 182 as your attack set with Jolly Nature. But the issue is, it doesn't pick up KOs really without like a sword stance. Um, and I guess like Earthquake actually does pick up like a lot of KOs, but it really does need that sword stance. Like the raw Earthquake, with how bulky things are this format and how many like grass types exist, uh, the existence of like wide guard everywhere, you want a single target option that just does a little bit more damage. And when I say a little bit, I mean a lot. Okay, so Headlong Rush is ridiculous. It's 120 base power. It's stronger than single target Earthquake. And it has, the only the only drawback is you have like a special defense and defense drop, which you already have that with close combat. So honestly, running both of these moves gives you great coverage. So close combat lets you hit steel types, rock types, normal types, and dark types. Headlong, oh, and ice types, sorry. Headlong rush lets you hit rock types, steel types, poison types, and electric types. You are hitting such a wide spectrum. Oh, also fire types. Sorry, you're hitting fire types too. You're hitting such a wide spectrum of Pokemon that Great Tusk has very few switch-ins in the metagame. And on top of all that, because honestly, like you could run like Ice Spinner, Knock Off, whatever. I would argue that the best final move for Great Tusk is just Earthquake. It's literally just Earthquake. Because when you run like Terra Ground Great Tusk with like a Life Orb uh, and you just literally do like Jolly Max Max or whatever, you could actually like you know, make this a little bit more specific, but Jolly Max Max is typically quite good. Um, it makes it so like, it just it just takes KOs, right? Terra Ground, 
Life Orb Earthquake is stronger than it's like I, it's comparable to Garchomp's. It's literally like one point stronger, but like it's the power of Garchomp, right? But with the ability to bypass Wide Guard, so you don't have to worry about Pelipper Wide Guarding away like your Earthquake to protect its partner. You don't have to worry about uh, a Follow Me or like a Rage Powder. Like you have the option to click either one, and like that can win games. Uh, and it's just like a really great Pokemon in that sense. The issue it falls, uh, the issue that like makes it fall quite a bit. Uh, is that Fluttermane is the number one Pokemon in the format as far as uh, ranked is considered. However, we look at like tournament usage, it's it's Iron Hands. But let's look at like ranked for now because I know that's where most of you guys uh, sit. And also, it, it's it's kind of the same. I mean, eh, not really, but like the same Mons exist, right? So as far as ranked goes, Fluttermane outspeeds one shots. Iron Bundle outspeeds one shots. Uh, Golden Go does not speed, but it can one shot. Arcanine outspeeds and can burn. Dondozo at plus two outspeeds one shots. Roaring Moon outspeeds one shots if it's Terra flying. There's a lot of ways that this thing can get outsped. However, if you notice, um, if this guy just outspeeds something, it, it just drops. Like it, it will get KOs and that's all you really need. That's where Talonflame comes in. You might be saying, oh, well, you know, Mr. Boosted, why aren't we running Murkrow? I thought Murkrow was like one of the best Pokemon in the format. Well, in series two, it's fallen off quite a bit. And me and Neil have talked about it extensively in like two other videos. Um, but the main like deal with Murkrow is that it has competition in Talonflame. It has competition in, um, where is it? Roaring Moon. Like that's another great Tailwind user. It even has competition in Iron Jugulus because Iron Jugulus can use like booster energy to boost its speed and then be like a really fast Tailwind setter. And the main thing that like these Pokemon have over Murkrow is offensive potential. So Murkrow kind of off the table for Great Tusk, but the other reason Great Tusk is really good with it is Talonflame has that priority Tailwind, turn one. It doesn't have to run Eviolite, so Covert Cloak is quite reliable. And you can actually just run like, let's go like this set. Like this is like a very basic Talonflame set. 31 attack, yeah. You max out the HP, like to give you like bulk, uh, but you also just run like Covert Cloak and like Gale Wings, right? Gale Wings gives you priority as long as you're like full HP. You put on Brave Bird and then the last two moves, Taunt to prevent uh, Trick Room and, or like Rage Powder or anything. And the final move is usually going to be Will-O-Wisp. Will-O-Wisp allows Great Tusk to be just an unbreakable wall on the physical side. If something gets burnt, it's not going to beat it. Like you should see the moves that bounce off of this thing. So like I said, Roaring Moon, very, very dangerous for Great Tusk because Great Tusk is a uh, fighting type and Roaring Moon tends to go for like Terra Flying. But if you outspeed the Roaring Moon and they're not going to Terra Flying, they just stay like a Dark Dragon type, close combat one shots. But let's say that they do that. Guess what you do? You go for Protect and then you go for a burn with your Talonflame and you honestly could care less. As soon as you Terra Ground, uh, now that move is going to bounce off of you because it's no longer super effective and it's just... It just bounce off of this thing, right? Uh, you could also, you know, switch it out and then deal with it with like another Pokemon. But like, that's a thing, right? Great Tusk's physical defense is so great that it doesn't care. And like I said, its main issues are Iron Bundle and like Fluttermane outspeeding it and one shotting it in the special side because of this guy's abysmal special defense. Outspeed them, you one shot them. There's no chance Fluttermane is going to eat a headlong rush. There's no chance Iron Bundle is going to eat a close combat. Granted, we do need to note that Iron Bundle will still outspeed you. Well, both of these mods will still outspeed you, even with Tailwind, uh, if they're running like Booster Energy. But Iron Bundle, while that does run Booster Energy, uh, it's actually more common for Fluttermane right now to run Focus Sash. So there are ways to like beat this thing, right? Uh, I would recommend that one of the, like the most reliable ways to run Great Tusk is actually going to be like the Focus Sash, which um, me and uh, Jin have been actually like experimenting with. Um, and what that allows you to do is it allows you to run like protect, like you keep your focus sash intact. And then on matchups where you have to face like iron bundle or like a Pokemon that just straight up like annihilates you if it outspeeds you like golden go, it gets you like revenge KOs, right? So you get like that tailwind and then you're able to go for a like, close combat into the iron bundle. And then the next turn, like you have priority Bray Bird to clean it up. Like that's like really, really good. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Like you need to have the speed control. Uh, other things that Talonflame is really good with. Uh, is just the fact that like it it's able to just really like annoy the opponent. Like, don't get me wrong, the opponent's gonna know not to fake out Talonflame because like there's no point other than stopping Gale Wings. But if they end up using that fake out on like another Pokemon to avoid just wasting it and like not really getting much value out of it other than breaking your HP, uh, 
then later on Talonflame can come back in and just reset the Tailwind. And with like smart defensive cores and positioning, it's like not even an issue. Like like literally Talonflame can get like two Tailwinds in a single game. So if we look at teams that did well in the tournament, uh, we see that we have at fifth place, Emilio Forbes, who went undefeated in Swiss and absolutely dominated with this um, with this team right here. We have Focus Sash, Great Tusk, Covert Cloak, uh, Talonflame. We see this is, you know, pretty much exactly what I was recommending here. Booster Energy, Iron Bundle, uh, Fluttermane, what's it called? King Gambit, literally on the screen right now, and uh, Glamora. Like I had mentioned, Fluttermane does really well next to uh, Great Tusk, mainly just because, like, they're both Pokemon that are very, very fast and frail attackers, but they attack on different ends of the spectrum. And things that Great Tusk can't, can't typically deal with, like ghost types, uh, or I guess what's like another thing? Um, flying types. Like, I'm not saying that like Fluttermane like hits flying types for super effective, but it does deal a significant amount of damage with like Moonblast and stuff. It's basically just like the, the other end of the spectrum. Also, under Tailwind, uh, Fluttermane can actually deal with booster energy... Iron Bundle, because Iron Bundle has such abysmal special defense that, like, it's just, like, not living a Moonblast, like, ever. So, for Focus Sash sets, you outspeed them, you just go for, like, Brave Bird into, like, Focus Sash Headlong Rush, or head, uh, Focus Sash Close Combat, but for, like, games here of, like, Open Team Sheet, and you see that they're uh, not running Focus Sash, just, like, Tailwind and Moonblast them, it's basically just, like, a free KO. So that's really cool. But we see that Emilio Forbes ran basically, like, a hyper offense team, we see the Terra Ice uh, Boost Energy Iron Bundle, making sure it's gonna outspeed everything, have like amazing speed control. And what was really cool is I actually comboed into like a faster Assurance uh, King Gambit. And like, yeah, this is literally just hyper offense with Great Tusk. And that's the thing, like Great Tusk just pokes so many holes into like common cores that it just makes it really difficult for you to have switch-ins to the things in the back. Like you lead off with Tusk and just pick up a KO or two, uh, and they just, they struggle to switch in on things that uh, they would normally use for like Fluttermane or uh, Iron Bundle. Like I said, like Fluttermane isn't able to hit like Steel types or Dark types very well if, well, I guess like if you're Choice Specs and you're locked into like Shadow Ball, you don't hit Dark types. Like that's, obviously you have like, you know, fairy coverage. But if you lead off with the Great Tusk and they end up having to give up their King Gambit or they end up having to give up their, I don't know, what's like a common Steel type in the format right now, Golden Go then they don't have anything to switch in on that hit and they just end up taking like neutral damage on everything off like a choice picks or a life or pokemon it's just really great on hyper offense uh other teams that did well in this tournament oh by the way i need to clarify this because I, I always get comments when this happens uh emilio forbes went undefeated in swiss and people will say like how did they not win the tournament they have a 10 and 0 record no one else did that it's 10 and 0 in swiss the best 32 records from swiss move on to top cut, where it becomes single elimination. And Emilio Forbes ended up getting uh, top eight in the single elimination bracket. Wolf ended up winning the whole thing because Wolf went undefeated in the single elimination, even though Wolf went eight and two in Swiss. So Wolf qualified for top cut and then went undefeated. And that's how you win. Okay, just clarifying that because a lot of people get confused and they comment about it. So like I said, it pokes holes in common teams. If we look at like the top teams, what's something that we notice? There is a heavy representation of Iron Hands. Iron Hands is everywhere. And like I said, Townflame Great Tusk, like it's it's a phenomenal lead. Iron Hands is also a phenomenal lead. In like a lead versus Great Tusk and Townflame, Iron Hands, if it isn't running Terra Fire or like a Lumberry, has to make some kind of concession. It's either gonna switch out and the opponent gets momentum in like a free attack or even like a substitute if they end up running that, because sub is also a really great option. It allows Great Tusk to, well, you also have to run like Life Orb for that one. It allows Great Tusk to be immune to Intimidate and also burn and just be like really, really annoying. Um, but yeah, it has to like switch out and then it gets free momentum or it stays in and one of two things happens. It gets headlong rushed and gets one shot or Talonflame gets a burn on it. And yes, the uh, Iron Hands could technically just go for Terra Grass and like fake out Great Tusk or whatever, any like defensive play, but it still gets burnt as long as the Talonflame connects the move. Like that's why these guys go so great together. Like there are a lot of leads that just get ab absolutely stuffed. Uh, other things that this guy's able to do, King Gambit just annihilated. Obviously they have to run Terra Flying to make sure they don't drop to that. Same with the Tyranitar, we see Tolar Web ran a Terra Flying Assault Vest Tyranitar. But 
let's say they use the Terra with something else. Let's say they end up top, popping the Terra on like the Flutter main and that goes down. Well, now you just get like KOs. Like I said, things that Flutter main deals with, you know, the uh, Great Tusk can come in and like deal with all the other things or vice versa. Uh, other Pokemon, Brute Bonnet was a Pokemon that we saw quite a bit in top cut. I know that uh, Amoongus ended up winning the whole thing, but Brute Bonnet is another Pokemon that you have to be really careful about. Like I said, Sub is really great on Great Tusk to switch in on like Spores from Amoongus or even Brute Bonnet, but the other thing they can do versus Brute Bonnet is they can just hit it with a close combat and it drops immediately. I don't care how good this thing's defenses are, it's got a really bad defensive type and being weak to fighting is just really bad in this format. Uh, I guess King Gambit can get away with it, but it also has to tear quite a bit. So yeah, that's like a really big thing. Uh, versus Ndidi Armor Rouge, that's like another lead that just gets absolutely stuffed by this if you play your cards right. Uh, remember how I said that like Life Orb Terra Ground with Earthquake is really good? Well, if the opponent isn't running Tailwind, what you can literally do is just go for the taunt into whatever Pokemon you think is going to go for like Trick Room, uh, but also just double down in Terra Ground Earthquake into that Pokemon. Or like I said, if they're not running Wide Guard, lead off with Fluttermane and Great Tusk and just go for like Dazzling Gleam. And if you're on, I mean, like, this setup would be, like, a Focus Sash set, obviously. But, like, you can go for, like, Dazzling Gleam and then, like, Terra Ground, Life Orb, Earthquake. And, yeah, you're going to get your Flutter Main down to, like, its Focus Sash. But if they don't have the option to Wide Guard, you're still in a lead. You didn't lose any Pokemon. And the trade is, like, most of your Flutter Main's HP for two KOs. Like, that's huge, dude. That's huge. Arcanine, another Pokemon that just does phenomenally in this format. If you're running like a clear amulet set, you avoid the Intimidate, but even if you don't avoid the Intimidate, it's very rare that an Arcanine's gonna be able to take a headlong rush at minus one if you're running like Life Orb or something. So yeah, I mean, other Pokemon that you can just deal with. Um, Annihilate like is pretty decent this format, but it has to run Terra Fire a lot of the time. Let's see if Freeze Eyes was Terra Fire. Yeah, it was Terra Fire. Uh, if you like Tailwind, you can actually just go for uh, Terra Ground Earthquake in the face of Mousehold plus Annihilate uh, because it does way too much damage and it just reaches a point where it's like very difficult for that lead to do anything. Uh, like Mousehold obviously doesn't live the uh, Terra Ground Earthquake with the Life Orb very easily. Other things, other things. Oh, Sand. This is one of like the most important things. Sand really struggles versus uh, the combo that I'm talking about right here, uh, Great Tusk plus Talonflame unless they pop the Terra flying on the Tyranitar. And it's basically mandatory for Tyranitar because otherwise Great Tusk is just able to spam Earthquake and it like takes nothing from any move. Like it's two physical attackers. They're mostly clicking rock moves or Tyranitar might click like a dark move if it's running like Assurance. It has to Terra Blast there. So being able to force a Terra and then come back in with something in the back, let's say that you're running uh, Emilio's team. You just outspeed the Tyranitar and like one shot it or not one shot, but like you come very close to KOing it with like uh, Freeze Dry or like Terra Terra Ice Freeze Dry. Or if you're running like the uh, the Glamora team that, you know, Emilio ran, uh, you just go for like Specs, uh, Specs Power Gem. There's a lot of things you can do with this team. And there's so many like opportunities to experiment with this core further. Like a core that I've been experimenting with uh, along with like Talonflame, Great Tusk and uh, Fluttermane was actually putting a Gothitelle onto there because I saw how well Gothitelle did in the format or in this tournament. I believe we... Yeah, no, there's literally Tolar Web has Gothitelle plus Great Tusk. And if we look at the team, Gothitelle, what's it running? Psybe, is that an error? I think it should be Psychic. Fake Out, Taunt, Trick Room. It's sort of like the Town Flame lean. They both have Taunt, but it's more like I don't want to have to deal with Trick Room and I want to also have Fake Out on lead. And we see, you know, just normal Great Tusk. You're able to just Fake Out and go for a KO. I personally like running Helping Hand, but still, like, you see what I mean What I mean here, right? It's such an oppressively strong lead that does well into everything and just pokes holes in so many common cores in the metagame that you're able to clean up with basically whatever you have in the back. And it's mostly just a matter of choosing the right support. Talonflame for games where you want to go fast and Gothitelle for games where you don't want your opponent to have any defensive options. So yeah, uh, that's going to be today's video. Just wanted to ramble a little bit about why I'm like in love with Great Tusk Talonflame Fluttermane right now. Been having a lot of fun with it, been experimenting quite a bit, been building with Jin, been building with Neil, been building with Darsh. And yeah, if you guys enjoy, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.